All right, so we have a few, we have enough people on. We'll go ahead and get into this time of prayer. And so it was on my heart, and I think I've already done a, a prayer for comfort uh, probably a couple of months ago, but I've just had a lot of um, people close to me experiencing some real interesting, um, I can't believe this kind of situations. And so I don't know if you've been experiencing it in your life as well, but I just wanted to send up some prayers. I also wanted to give us a few scriptures to um, keep our mind on as we're processing through different pains, as we're processing through different different disappointments, different heartbreaks and things like that. So um, if this is your first time tuning in, I typically pray a scripture and then I pray according to what I believe the Holy Spirit is um leading me to pray. And so we're going to go ahead and get into our time of prayer. Father, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We consider it an absolute privilege and an honor to be your children. We thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to come before your presence and ask of those things that we stand in need of. We thank you, God, that we belong to a Lord and a God who hears the prayers of his people. We thank you, God, that we have a God that we can come to in our time of trouble, in our time of pain, in our time of distress, in our time of dis comfort in our time of fear in our time of anguish and you hear our prayers you hear our cries you hear our heart and you do not turn us away father god i thank you so much for being the great and magnificent marvelous wonderful god that you are now this is your opportunity to engage and begin to put in the comments who god is to you begin to put in the comments what you thank him for what you appreciate him for what you bless him for in this season of your life because no matter what is going on, God is still on the throne. No matter what um, predictions, no matter what accusations, no matter what insults, no matter what things come against us, our God is still in control. Our God is still on the throne and our God is not changing his mind about the promises he has made to his people. And so Father God, again, we just want to say thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father God, that we have an advocate that we can we can come to, Lord God, that goes before us, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit, he prays on our behalf. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And then not only the Holy Spirit, but the word of God says, Jesus is on your right side, daily interceding on our behalf. And I believe that he's interceding that we will continue in the faith. He's interceding that our faith will not fail us. He's interceding that the righteous will not be forsaken. He's interceding that those things that God has promised concerning in our lives would be fulfilled and father we thank you that even in the midst of pain even in the midst of hurt even in the midst of trauma you are still worthy to be praised you are still worthy to be honored you are still worthy to be adored and as the the um as the word says, Lord God, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. That is the posture and the position of one who has faith. That is the posture and the position of one who understands that all things work together for my good. That is the posture of one who believes that they belong to a good father. And if he has permitted such a thing to be so, he has a greater plan in store. And so God, we praise you for the greater plan. God, we thank you for the greater plan. God, we thank you that something good comes out of our disappointment. Something good comes out of our tragedy. Something good comes out of our anger, or out of our agony. Something good comes out of our broken heart. God, because you are a good father and you do not disappoint those who put their trust in you. So even in the midst of hurt, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of grief, even in the midst of mourning, even in the midst of not fully understanding what you're doing right now, God, we say you're worthy of praise. We say you're worthy of adoration. We say you're worthy of honor. We say you're worthy of splendor. We say you're worthy of majesty. God, you are still due praise no matter what we face. And we make a decision today, God, that no matter what our position, our heart, our heart posture will be that we love you, that we trust you, that we honor you, even though we don't understand it. God, your word tells us in Psalm 34, 18, 
The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. If you're in a position right now where you're saying, my heart is broken, your heart may be broken because somebody has recently passed. Your heart may be broken because you may have just broken up with somebody or they broke up with you. Your heart may be broken because you missed the opportunity or because you lost a job. I need you to declare, even in the comments, that the Lord is close to me. He is close to me. We have a promise from the word of God that he is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. If you're in a position and you say, Lord God, my heart, I am broken. I don't know. I can't take it anymore. If you are in that position, you need to declare he is close to me. He rescues me. He rescues me. And you begin to declare that no matter what you're facing, your God is close to you and he rescues you. You have a promise from the word of God. And so father, we thank you that that we will begin to see that even in our experience, that Lord God, we will even experience the peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of heartbreak. We'll have peace in the midst of grief. We'll have peace in the midst of mourning. We'll have peace in the midst of disappointment because God, we understand that your word says you come close to, you are near to, meaning you do not abandon us. You do not forsake us. You're not disappointed in us. You're not ashamed that Lord, God, we are, we're experiencing a heartbreak or a heartache, even over something that you told us to let go of. Father God, you are not concerned, but what you are concerned about is your people being honest about the position of their hearts, about the position of their spirit, about the position of their minds. And God, your people are hurting and they don't know how to express it to you. They don't know how to tell you that their pain, that the pain is too deep. God, that they don't even possess the words to say, God, and I thank you that today Today you are telling them by way of the Holy Spirit and by way of this prayer that you are close to their broken heart and all they have to do is cry out to you. All they have to do is surrender it to you. All they have to do is God allow you to walk with them even in the midst of grief, even in the midst of mourning, even in the midst of disappointment, even in the midst of anguish. Lord God, your word says, Lord God, that Father God, we may walk through the valley of shadow of death, but you are near, you are with us, Father God. And I thank you, Lord God, that even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death, of the shadow of poverty, of the shadow of fear, of the shadow of depression, of the shadow of, 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 of disappointment, God, you are with us. You are near us. You are close to us. And Father, I thank you that that is the truth of the believer, that that is the reality of our faith, that even in the midst of heartache, even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of frustration, our great God is still near you have not fallen off the throne because pain has come to our life. You have not fallen off the throne because grief has come to our life. You have not fallen off the throne because heartache has come to our life. You are still good. 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 And we will not let this situation we will not let this season of our life, we will not let this moment of our life talk us out of faith. Because though we are experiencing pain in this moment, we have a lifetime that shows that you are faithful. We have a lifetime that shows you are good. We have a lifetime that shows you are gracious. We have a lifetime that shows you are a provider. We have a lifetime that shows you are a sustainer. We have a lifetime that shows you are a way maker. We have a lifetime that shows you are a good God. And we will not let this moment cause us to curse you. We will not let this moment cause us to forsake you. We will not let this moment cause us to walk away from what we know to be true. You are good no matter what. You are good no matter what. You are good no matter what. And I encourage you to put that in the comments. He is good no matter what. No matter what, he is good. That is the posture. That is the heart position of the believer. This does not mean it doesn't hurt. This does not mean that you're not going to experience grief. This does not mean that you're not going to have more seasons of uh, more seasons of tears and more se seasons of pain. But it does mean that even though I'm experiencing this in this moment, he's good. No matter what. Look at your life. 
Do not let this one moment of pain, this one season of hurt, this one season of grief, this one season of shame, this one season of disappointment, have you fix your mouth and even your heart to declare a lie about who your God has been in your life. This situation will not change your confession in Jesus name. And I encourage you to put that in the comments. This situation will not change my confession. This situation will not change my confession. This situation will not change my confession. You're going to have to decide in your heart and in your mind that no matter what, my God, my God is good. The word of God says, consider it joy. All things that we face, we have to consider it. We, we have to understand that this is the will of the father for our lives. So if he has permitted it, there is some goodness that's going to come out of it. And it is your, your job to start looking for the goodness. Instead of looking at everything that's wrong, everything that's crazy, everything that's frustrating, begin to look for the goodness. And the goodness may be you have your health and strength. The goodness may be that even though you don't have a job, you still have a home. The goodness may be even though you may not have a home, you have a car, so you still have some form of shelter. And I know that is a, a, a weird concept because, yeah, you would prefer to be comfortable in this season. You would prefer not to know this pain in this season. You would prefer that this could have been somebody else's lot in life. But if your great God in his wisdom, in his love, and in his kindness permitted you to experience this thing, there is some goodness to come out of this and you have to begin to look for the goodness god how can this thing really bring you praise how can this tragedy this, this tragedy cause triumph in my life how can this 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 horrible situation cause me to still declare you are holy how can i see you even in the midst of this and I know it's contrary to what our feelings tells us. It's contrary to what our society tells us. But I'm telling you, our great God, some good will come out of this. And you have to determine in your heart that you're not going to allow what, what is going on to put you in a position where you curse God. Where you say, he, he doesn't love me. How dare you let one situation... Change your mind about everything you know about God. It's your mother. Your mother died. Your, your spouse died. Your, your child died. And I know those are great pains. And it is, it, it is not fair. And God, why would you allow it? God, why would you permit it? God, where were you in this moment? You can have those conversations with him. But at the end of the day, he's still good. And you are just a steward. And you're going to have to accept that you are a steward. And life belongs to him. And even though we wish, because I'm telling you, I wish my grandmother was still here. I wish my grandfather was still here. I wish one of the dearest people in the gospel that I love dearly was still here. But God allowed whatever situation to occur and they're no longer here. But you know what I will not do? I will not curse God and say he's not good because of this particular experience. Because I have a lifetime of stuff that declares he is good, that declares he is faithful, that declares he's consistent, that declares he is worthy, that declares he is able, that declares he is miraculous. So if in this moment of pain and discomfort I will permit my mouth to fix itself to make a lie and an accusation against God we gotta repent he's good he's good and he's good no matter what and your life is a reflection of his goodness because things could be much worse but they're not and we're gonna put an amen on the prayer <laughs> amen <laughs> amen <laughs> And if you need more scriptures about um, uh, comfort, you have Psalm 147 and 3. It says, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Psalms 147 and 3, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Psalm 30 and 5, for his anger is fleeting, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay the night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may stay the night, but joy comes in the morning. And you need to understand that if you are experiencing some weeping in this season of your life, joy is coming. Weeping is evidence that joy is on the way. 
So if you're in a place right now where you're experiencing great pain, and I'm again, I'm not making light of it. I want to also tell you, because if you've been following me any length of time, you know I am a big about Jesus and a therapist. So if you are experiencing some great grief, I would encourage you to go to grief counseling. Don't be trying to talk about it. it's just me and the Lord. We're going to get through this. No, God has created people. He has created a science. He has helped people develop a science to help you get through the grieving process. Do not try to do this thing on your own and alone. There are resources available to you to help you get used to your new normal. And I'm saying new normal because it will never be the same. And you're going to have to accept that in some areas of your life. That you may not necessarily be mourning the loss of a loved one, but you may be mourning the loss of a relationship. You may be mourning the loss of a job. You may be mourning the loss of an opportunity. You're going to have to accept, I may never ever have that moment again, but God is still good. And I need Holy Spirit. I need the grief counselor or I need a regular therapist or whoever I need to help me adjust to this new normal, being open to the help. You're no less, you're, you're not less of a Christian and it, it is not a reflection of your faith if you decide, okay, I need to go reach out to help, it do, to, to get some help. It does not mean that you do not believe God. It does not mean that um, your faith is, is failing you. It actually proves that you're wise because you're in a position that you need help. And it, it is actually insane of an individual to know they need help and not go seek it. It is wise of an individual to be aware that they need help and go seek out the different avenues um, to get that help. And so I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know that our great God, not only does he provides comfort, but he also provides counselors. And it is my hope and prayer that you would allow healing to come to your life, healing to come to your heart, healing to come to your spirit, that you will make it your business in 2021, that I will not be grieving in this season improperly, that I will give myself the opportunity to mourn correctly. I will give myself the opportunity to grieve correctly. And how do we do this? We tell the truth. We give ourselves permission to cry. We give ourselves permission not to be strong. We give ourselves permission to acknowledge that this individual is gone. We give ourselves permission to experience this human moment and not try to guide it, you know, make it all about, well, God is keeping me. Bro, you broken. Sis, you're hurting. You lost something dear to you. Something that was a part of your heart. Something that, that was a part of your life. Don't, don't try to spiritualize that. That's not a spiritual moment. It's a life moment. And you need to get people who have been um, trained, people who have gone through this thing as well that can help you and assist you. Comfort will come when you get counsel. And that is for somebody. I'm not necessarily, I don't know who, but you've been vacillating between, oh, should I go to counseling? Should I? Yes, go. Go, go, and go. And you keep going until you find the person that you need. And because I know it'll be somebody who watched this live and be like, well, I went to counseling. It didn't work. Okay, go to another counselor. You keep going. You keep searching. You keep looking until you find the person that can help walk you through life. You can't give up because the first person didn't work. You can't give up because the second person didn't jail. You have to decide in your heart and your mind, my healing, my deliverance, my joy, my freedom, it is important to me. And by any means necessary, will I go after it? You got to go. Get help. You can't do it on your own. Yes, Jesus is your help. He is your help. He is your aid. He is near to the brokenhearted, but he has put people in place to help you. <coughs> mm, somebody must need that because they just started choking for no reason. And that's just not what we do over here. So, and for some of you shoot. That's what, that's what this grief has been doing to you. It has been choking the very life out of you. You're not even the same anymore. 
It has morphed your identity. It has morphed your personality. It has morphed um, your joy in life. And God is saying, I want to restore your joy in this season. I want to give you your life back, but you're going to have to give me your grief. You're going to have to give me your mourning. You're going to have to allow me to have access to it too. And you're going to have to admit that you're upset with me. I'm God. I can handle that you're mad. I can handle that you're angry. I can handle that you blame me. I can handle whatever lie that you told yourself to stop communicating with me. I can handle that. Because you disconnected from the only source that's going to give you strength. The only source that's going to give you peace. The only source that's going to give you real comfort. And so if you're in a space where you've been like, God, I hate you because you took my mama or you permitted it. I hate you because you took my baby. You permitted it. I hate you because I had a miscarriage and you permitted it. If that is how you are feeling, go to God. He can handle those confessions. It doesn't make him think less of you. It actually shows that you believe that he's your father. Because you can have those kind of conversations with your father. You can tell your daddy where you are hurting. You can tell your father that this pain is too great for me. You can tell your father, I need help. There is no brownie points for being strong when it comes to grief, when it comes to mourning. And this lie that we've accepted in our community, particularly if it's the black community, I can't speak for other communities because I haven't really been a part of them. But in the black community, we have this dumb saying that and this, this dumb idea that we got to be strong for other people. Baby, you done lost your whole whoever, your husband, your wife, your child, your whatever, and you up here trying to be strong for other people. Carmen said in the Latino community too, no, no, no. My strength is in the Lord. I pour out, I break down, I fall apart in his presence. And he gives me the strength to endure this mourning season of my life. He gives me the strength to endure this grieving season of my life. He gives me the strength to endure this sorrowful season of my life. And understanding that, hey, this is part of the fall. We Nobody can get past pain and suffering. It came when Adam and Eve did what they did. And it does not make God less than good. Because you're experiencing a moment of suffering. You're experiencing a moment of grief. You're experiencing a moment of sorrow. And I'm encouraging you. If you really want to experience some comfort. In the midst of what you're going through. You're going to have to take your broken heart. Your grieving heart. Your mourning heart. Your disappointed heart. Your frustrated heart. Your angry heart. You're going to have to give that to your great God. And you're going to have to tell him, Lord, with everything that's going on, and even with my feelings that I have towards you, and if I may be honest, I really don't even feel like talking to you, but I have no other resort. I'm bringing my pain to you. I'm bringing my hurt to you, and I'm giving you permission to be God even in the midst of my pain because many of us have made idols of our grief. We have made idols of our mourning and don't get me, don't, don't take this the wrong way because I don't want anyone thinking I'm like just telling you to get over it. But get over it. No, get past it. And what I mean by get past it is make a decision to understand like this was this was a very painful situation this was a very painful moment my per this person has died and and I acknowledge the fact that they have died but you died too you stopped living when they stopped living and that is not what God created that is not what God desires for your life that person passing away was not that should not have been the moment that you died that should not have been the moment that you stopped believing. That should not, should not have been the moment that you quit dreaming. And for many of us, the enemy has been successful 
in using grief and mourning to take us away from fulfilling what God has called and purposed us to do. I'm not making light of the pain. And if anybody really knows my story, y'all know I have experienced some great grief in my life. And that's why I can boldly get on here and tell you, you're going to have to make a decision to work through it. And there are still days that I cry when I need to. There are still days when I, you know, I say, man, God, that, that's a hard one. I still have those conversations with him, but I'm not going to stop living this life he's given me because he obviously left me here for a reason. And you're going to have to decide in your heart that even in the midst of experience death, experiencing death, even in the midst of experiencing grieving and mourning, that you're going to honor your God and even honor that person and make a decision to continue to live. You stop living. You don't dress like you used to dress. You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't walk like you used to walk. But I am declaring by the spirit of God that he is going to take that, that, that spirit of heaviness. He's going to take that coat of mourning that you have been wearing. He's going to give you gladness. There will be a great exchange. When you make the exchange with him, he's going to, in, in, he's going to turn around and give you gladness. He's going to turn around and give you joy. He's going to turn around and give you your dream and your vision back again. Because all you can see is what life used to be like with that person. And you have not charted out or considered a future for your own life since they've been gone. And for the people who are experiencing a fresh situation, by all means, you know, the process is going to be ongoing and for the rest of our days it will be ongoing but i'm speaking more so in that particular with that particular thing that i just said for those who've been holding on to stuff for 10 15 20 years it's time to let it go so you can live again and letting it go is not letting go of the memory of them it's not letting go of the memory of them. They're going to always be in your heart. There'll be times that they pop up as you're doing certain things. And when you make certain accomplishments, you'll have, you'll have that, that thought still there in your heart of wishing that they were there and, you know, wishing that they could see this moment. That's normal. That's healthy. But you got to make a choice to live. Live. Live past that moment. God gives us the grace to do it. But we have to choose. That's what we want to do. And this may sound strange, but we've made idols, some of us, of our grief. And we look to that grief. We look to that mourning. We look, we, we look to that stuff. We look to, to how much we've been hurt. And we look at that idol and then when it's time for us to move forward, we can't move forward. When it's time for us to try something new, we look to the idol of grief. No, I know. I remember the last time I tried something. It didn't work. And so you don't move forward. You look at the idol of heartbreak. I remember the last time I tried to love somebody. So you don't move forward. Give your idols to your God. And it's not just these things of money. Sometimes it's our pain that we've made idols. And we look to our pain before we make decisions. We look to our pain to determine how we're going to move forward in the future. When we should be looking to our great God who has a great plan for our lives. Fully equipping us and enabling us to move forward. This is the year. That I believe, and for the rest of your life, anytime you're experiencing grief, if you make a decision to give your grief over to God, that you'll live again. And some of you have been asking yourself, I, how, how do I get back there? That's the first step. Getting back to your creator is how you get back to life. How you get back to joy, how you get back to peace, how you get back to dreaming again, hoping again, having faith again. 
It is not the will of the Father for you to live the rest of your days in grief. It's not his will. It's not his will. And again, I'm not making light of the things that we've experienced. I'm not, I'm not suggesting to you to, and I know I said get over it earlier, but I should have said get through it. Get through it is a better, uh, it's, it's, it's more sensitive. Because I don't want to, I know when people are hurting and grieving that the wrong words will turn you off. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to turn you off, but I am saying I'm trying to turn you on to the rest of what God has for you. And you stopped in that moment that you didn't get that job. You didn't get that opportunity. You didn't get that relationship. You didn't get so much stuff. And that has been your place where you've just stopped living. And today, I believe the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm ready for us to move forward when you are. And I pray you will move forward. I pray you will trust your great God with your great pain. Trust your great God with your grief. With your remorse, with your regret, with your anger, with your frustration. Whatever it is, give it to him. He's big enough to handle it, big enough to sort it out and fix it, big enough to free you from it. And I pray that you will so that your life can be an example to others of what our God can do when we give him our grief. And Danielle, I'm so glad that Holy Spirit is working on your heart, even in the moment of this, this live, I'm so grateful that he is bringing healing to your heart. And I truly pray that you would continue to let him do the work, pour out everything. We don't have to hold nothing from God. We don't have to be cute about what we tell him. We don't have to try to impress him with our confessions. God, I'm in pain is the perfect way to start the conversation. God, I'm angry with you is the perfect way to start the conversation. God, I don't like you. God, I stopped believing in you. Perfect ways to start a conversation with your creator so healing can start. God loves you. I love you. If there's anything that I can do, if you need resources, you can hit me up in my inbox. I have a few people who are counselors as well as I have some resources concerning counseling. And I'll be more than willing to get those things to you. Um, I just want you free. I want you free in Jesus. I want you free in life. I want you free in love. I want you free in pursuing what it is that he's called and purpose you to do. I just want you free. And um, I'm starting to see that a lot of what God allowed me to experience in my life was for this moment right here. So that I can be a, a beacon of light to those who have experienced great, great grief, great disappointment, great mourning, great hurt. And to know, hey, there is life after it. But you're going to have to every day choose life. And in those moments that it's very difficult to choose life that day, allow God to be with you in that time of pain. God, I don't want to get up. God, I don't want to go to work. God, have those conversations with him. Let him bring you up out of this and strengthen you. And allow him to turn your mourning into dancing as the word of God says. There is a future that he has in store for you. And I pray that you will permit yourself the opportunity, the pleasure, and the privilege to experience it. If I said anything on this live that has confused anyone, know that you can always hit me up in my inbox. I do not ever want you to leave a live confused. If you do, I have failed, okay? So no, you can always hit me up and ask whatever questions that you need to ask. I'm going to go ahead and get off of here, but um, I love y'all. I'm praying for you, and I truly am excited about the testimonies that will come from you choosing life.
And I see some of y'all in the comments saying it. I choose life. I choose life. Every day choose life. Yeah. Keep choosing it. Yeah, have a lovely day. I will see you guys um, some other time this week. I'm not sure what day this yet.